Our pay is made of a basic salary that goes between £12,000 to £15,000. That's below the minimum wage. They're making it legal by including an allowance which is meant for food. This is an outrage and this is where they make the laws. So I believe it needs to be outlawed. This isn't the first and only example of companies finding really quite creative ways to get round the minimum wage. I absolutely agree with you that it requires a change in the law. Obviously we're not talking about a rogue employer here. We're talking about a FTSE 100 global brand. The pay disparity between our CEO, Willie Walsh, and us is over 500 times more. We in the, in the party, in the, in the shadow cabinet, are absolutely with you on this whole issue of, of, of this ridiculous inequality in pay structures. It is obscene in the extreme that somebody can derive this level of income from being part of the same organisation. It, 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 it's completely not immoral. Most of mixed fleet cabin crew live off a diet of pot noodles and tins of tuna when we are away from base, or simply we don't eat until we get back on the aircraft so that we can have our crew meals, which are not really good anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We've been hugely affected by Brexit because when we are away, we are to pay to exchange money whilst other airlines pay their cabin crew um, meal allowances in local currency. Pilots have higher meal allowances than we do and we are in the same hotels having basically the same costs. There are some destinations where you simply cannot leave the hotel, you must eat in the hotel. So there isn't a sense that you can opt for, oh, we'll go and eat in a cheap restaurant. Those who can't afford to live in London are forced to sleep in their cars um, between flights because they can't afford the petrol to go home, let alone a hotel around the airport. Over 80% of us have admitted to suffering from stress and depression due to our financial circumstances. 75% of us have admitted to operating an aircraft whilst physically unfit to do so. They can't afford to go sick and lose their flight pay. Legally, you cannot fly if you suffer from certain criteria. Blocked here, sickness and diarrhoea being some of them. Every other fleet, a portion of that sickness is allowed to be discounted because there's a legal document that BA has to abide by that says you are not allowed to fly. On mixed fleet, as managers, we are not allowed to discount anything that's related to any of those issues. A huge portion of our workforce are women and LGBT people and these people are being forced into low paid work that's then on top of that being forced to take seconds and we have crew who are taking third jobs then going into work in a safety critical role having possibly done a six to nine hour shift in another job. That's really been compounded by our new route to Santiago in Chile. It's a 14 and a half hour flight and BA have told us that unlike the pilots, we only get one night there because they're not prepared to pay for a second night in a hotel. So you would, you would do the whole 14 and a half hour flight, you would have one night and then you would go back and do that the same route. And uh, yes. I was actually on the inaugural flight to Santiago with another couple of colleagues here. And just to let you know, this was given to me, a night, a night stop flight, as a prize for being a highly informing man. <laughs> <laughs> When we had a meeting with an IBM, maybe it was only her opinion, I don't want to say that that's British Airways' opinion, but that IBM said, you are low skilled, uh, you are low skilled workforce, uh, and if you don't like this job, go and find another one. They teach us a lot of training, so those skills are added on to whatever we have. I also speak seven languages, for instance. In Santiago, actually, did all the PAs in Spanish. I was the only person speaking Spanish, and I believe I made a difference. But to be told that I'm a low-skilled employee, I don't think it's really nice, anyway. BA provide us with a pension, um, and we have auto-enrollment. You're auto-enrolled on 1% cost for you. 2% for the company. That 2% for us is only 2% on basic pay because it's our um, allowances and the things that make up the rest of our pay don't count towards our pensionable pay. They are saying that the other £3 an hour isn't pay, it's allowances, but then they say that it's... So it's kind of, they're having their cake and eating it. There's a lot of us that rely on our staff travel to come into work and to, for, to be able to earn a living, but that's been taken.
taken away from us for 12 months now for this strike time. We've got set days of industrial action which we, we, we are here, but if we're on, if we're rostered onto a trip which then goes into days which aren't industrial action, mm -hmm. we're not being paid for those days either. They're taking away all the bonuses that we were meant to be getting for 2016 and 17, which make, uh, which make the part of the 21,000 that they're saying that we're earning. Mm -hmm. So clearly we are not going to be able to do that this year. We call on British Airways to set this figure of £21,000 as minimum wage for cabin crew. Um, that wouldn't cost them a penny um, because that's what British Airways are actually claiming that that's what already I mean. <laughs> As um, our representatives, at what point would you think that the issues we've raised would be uh, worthy of being drawn to the attention of the Transport Select Committee? This has actually shocked a lot of us. We didn't understand the full extent of what was happening and we didn't know the human cost. The great thing about Select Committees is that they have the power to call witnesses. So they would have the power to compel British Airways to attend a public hearing and to answer questions on your and our behalf. So I think it's a very good suggestion and certainly one that I'll take up with the rest of the Unite group. Given that you were um, advertised and offered 21,000 as a minimum, it's nothing short of fraud. The British public need to know about this because I don't think the vast majority of people that will be using your airline have the first idea, so the work you're doing is so important in raising awareness. Like Louise, I was also shocked and surprised at just how low your pay is and how poor your conditions are, because I grew up thinking that cabin crew was a glamorous profession. The fact that uh, they are refusing to come to any sort of reasonable settlement with you, frankly, is a national disgrace. You have our full support, and we'll carry on here, as long as this, this dispute is on, to do whatever we can through Parliament to support you in your fight uh, and uh, to its eventual inevitable victory because you've got justice on your side. Thank you very much. Line. We're going to be with you until you win this dispute. Yeah. Your dispute isn't just about BA. What you're sending out is a message to many other workers in exactly the same situation, whose wages are being forced down, where there's bullying tactics by management. You're saying to them, stand up like us, because when we stand up together, we win together. Yeah.